This is part two of the tutorial creating online surveys with Gravity Forms and WordPress. In the first part, <clears throat> in the first two videos of the first part of this tutorial series, we covered planning out your online survey and also choosing the fields that you would use for your survey, entering those fields into Gravity Forms, and then editing the first few fields. In this video, we're going to finish off the remaining fields and handle a couple complex conditional fields for your survey. So we'll continue on with the next field, which is number. And in this field, through our plan, we wanted to ask the user or the respondent what their overall rating for the service would be. So this is a number field, and it looks like this. It has an arrow up and down where you could change the number and a number format here. Uh, we're gonna use just numbers one through 10. So we're going to put overall service rating. We have the number format there. Now, <clears throat> numbers give you the ability to choose a minimum and a maximum. So we're going to put in 1 in 10, and that's going to automatically put a description in for us, telling them that they must choose a number between 1 and 10, our range selected. And if they don't, it's going to return an error when they try to submit the form. Now, we might also want to add a little description telling them which one is better. Sometimes on surveys, one is best and 10 is worst. Sometimes it's the other way around. So where we're going to put down something like um, with one being poor rating and 10 being excellent. And that'll give them some idea of where they need to put that. We're going to require this. And this is not a conditional, so we're done with this field. We can click the heading and close it. Now the next question on our list of survey is, would you recommend our service to others? So we'll put that in. And obviously this is a yes, no, and we'll get rid of the third value. We'll also require this question. We don't need to put a description. It's a pretty simple drop down box, which will just let them use yes or no. And again, this is not a conditional. So we'll close that field out and move on to the next field. Now, technically, this is the last field, although this last field is a complex conditional and it will require two other fields to be included with it, depending on how the user answers. So this one question was, would you like to be contacted about your responses to this survey? And depending on how they answer, we're going to give them contact options. In this particular choice, we're going to give them either email or phone. Now, above, we've asked them about their email, but we didn't require it, so they may not have entered it. If they choose to be contacted about their responses, meaning they would like for you to follow up with them, maybe for customer support, you give them the choice to contact them either via email, in which case we'll drop down another email field. This time it will be required. And it's pretty intuitive to do it that way that you would ask them for their email after you ask them how they wanted to be contacted. If they choose phone, we'll have a drop down box for phone. If they choose neither or not to be contacted, neither of those fields will show up. We don't need to confuse them by asking them for a required email address or a phone number. So we're going to start by changing this field level, field label, by saying, would you like to be contacted regarding your responses to this survey? And we're going to make this a yes, no. We'll get rid of that last one. And we're going to make this a required. Now, you see here, we have the response for the next question. So we'll just move this up. We dropped down and edited one below. So let's close this. And then the next response is going to be the answer to the conditionals. And it's going to ask them, how would they like to be contacted? So here we're going to put down, if yes, how would you like to be contacted? And this is going to give them a choice of either phone or email. We put email first. And we'll get rid of this third choice. Now this is going to be conditional. This is going to be conditional upon them answering yes to the survey. So we will come down here and require this if they answer yes, and then we will make it a conditional. We're going to enable conditional logic, and we're going to come down here and say, 
would you like to be contacted regarding your responses to this survey? And if the answer is yes, then this field will pop up. I'm just going to go up here and edit this because I noticed a spelling mistake in this label. And then we'll close that out very quickly. Now we have two choices here regarding this last two field option. We have either phone or email. So let's drop phone down below email since that's the order that we put them in. Now if they choose email, we're going to have an email field. We want it to be required. And then we're going to click on advanced because we want it to be conditional. And this is where the complex conditional comes in. It's going to be conditional on two fields. Not only is it going to pop up if email is selected, but we also only want it to pop up if yes is selected where they're asked to be contacted for the survey. If, if this field here shows email, this will still show up, even if this says no. We want to get rid of that behavior. So what we want to do is go down into the conditional class here, and we want to make this conditional on two values matching. So we want it to say, would you like to be contacted regarding your answers to the survey if that's yes? And then we'll click this, our, uh, this plus button here. And then we're going to want to make sure if they ask to be contacted, if yes, how would you like to be contacted? And we want that answer to be email. If those two conditions are met, then the email field will show. We're going to do something similar with the phone field. So we'll click here to expand the phone field. We will require it, and you could change format. This is the standard American United States format. You could also plug in international, which will ask for a country code. And then we'll click on advanced, and we will click on conditional here as well. And this is going to be conditional on two different things. Would you like to be contacted regarding your responses to this survey? We will add that. And also, how, if yes, how would you like to be contacted? We want that to be phone. So when those two conditions are met, the phone field will display. At this point, that's the end of our survey creation. Now what we'll do is save the form, and then we'll preview it to make sure it is displaying the way we want it to. We'll click Update Form. We'll be brought back to the top. The form has been saved. And then we will click on Preview to see how this looks. It's a good idea to preview your form before you embed it in your page and make it go live. Any information we click here won't be added to the database. It won't go live. This is just a test form to make sure it's showing up correctly. So what we do here is you'll see that we've added the name field first and last, email, which is just a text box. Was it easy for you to receive this service? And this is where we can test our first conditional. Yes, if we click no, it drops down. What were the problems? Too far away, too expensive, did not like customer service. So, so you'll see that's working correctly. Was this service helpful to you? Yes. This is a paragraph entry for if yes. How did the service help you specifically? Favorite feature of the service, that looks good. Any improvements you would recommend? We did not require that one, so you'll see the star is not next to it. Overall service rating on a scale of one to 10. So all of our forms are looking good. Would you recommend this service to others? Now here we get into our complex conditional. Would you like to be contacted regarding your response to this survey? And it's defaulted to yes and email, so email shows up. But we can come down here and click no, and both of those fields go away. We could click back on yes and change it from email to phone, and the email field changes to a phone field and allows us to submit it. So you'll see this is working correctly, and we will now return back to the form. And one other thing we want to do before we embed the form is to set up notifications, and notifications will allow us to be notified as an administrator anytime somebody clicks on the form itself. We can be notified. We can also set up notifications for the actual user. And this is a great thing to do if you're getting a survey, say, uh, for uh, something you're incentivizing them. Maybe you want to give them a coupon. So if they fill out the survey, you automatically email them a coupon. Or you can pass them off or redirect them to a page where they can get a coupon or, or some kind of incentive that you're offering for them to do this survey. And, and Gravity Forms and WordPress give you the ability to do that. So we're going to come up here and we're going to click Notifications. And this is pretty easy. There's two sec sections, notification to administrator, and you'll see all the email settings here. And then down below, notification, email, enable email notifications to users. If you click that button, the notifications box looks exactly the same as it does up here. And this is selected by default. 
So we'll look down here, send to email address. This is going to send to the admin email and this is controlled by the admin email in your settings. If you don't want it to send to admin email, you would change that email in here by putting in your email address. You can also add a BCC if you wanted to blind carbon copy somebody else. You add their email address in there as well. You could put the from name and the reply to name, but these really won't apply since you're sending it to yourself. You can insert a subject along with merge tags from your field. In this case, it's new submission from and then the form title. In our case, the form title is customer feedback survey. You might also want to add your website at the end of that so that if you have multiple surveys on multiple websites, you'll know which one this is. And then down below is the actual message itself, and there's a merge tag to include all fields with all of the data that the user enters in an email, and that will be sent to the admin. If you did choose to select email notifications to users, you'll go through the same fields. It will send from the admin email address. You could also put in your name here if you choose to do so. If you want them to reply to a different email address than the admin email, you would put that here. You would also insert merge tags for your subject, and you could put something like, thanks for filling out our survey. You don't have to get too specific. And then in the message, you could insert the answers that they've given and do customer service. Like for example, thank you for filling out our survey. We noticed that you found it hard to reach our service. The location was tough for you. May we ask where you are? Or can we refer you to someplace that's closer to where you live so that you can pick up our service at a different location? These are all examples of how you can respond automatically to poor customer feedback and help people with your product or service. In this area, you would also put the information or the link to a coupon or some sort of code that they can get for filling out that survey. So these are the ways to set up notifications. And when you're done with that, you'll click Save Settings. And then that will be done and input back into the form. We're not going to save these notifications. We'll just click back to Form Editor. We'll click Leave This Page. If you wanted to save them, of course, you would click Save and then Return Back. And the next step, we're going to cover how to embed this form, since it is done, into your WordPress page and make that survey go live.